markets. I operate quite a bit in, uh, in Orlando, Florida. Uh, Mike has a lot going on in Las Vegas and Phoenix, and Troy has some in Orlando as well. So uh, we're going to start out here with a presentation, and we'll allow questions uh, throughout. Uh, whenever you have a question, just feel free to go right ahead and ask it. So uh, I'll start this up here. And, uh, yeah, those were just a few of the properties that uh, we were working on. Uh, so yeah, your few you saw that as well. Mm -hmm. Your own individual companies. Uh, my company is Merida Real Estate. Uh, Sunny Meadows Real Estate is Tom's, and MKN Real Estate is Mike's. Uh, they're all Florida registered. Uh, and we all also have individual LLCs within those to help from a liability perspective, and we buy uh, through those. Uh, we've been uh, investing in Canada since uh, early 2000, and uh, we've been looking at uh, U.S. real estate for about six months now or so. Uh, and really, we're just focusing on uh, acquiring, renovating, renting, uh, and flipping and, and some properties in the, in the U.S. That's, that's who we are. And really when it comes down to why, we just see a lot of opportunity. Um, it really is a perfect storm there. Uh, there's a lot of situations that make that up in the U.S. And I think you've heard of the media around. So the, there's a ton of foreclosures that are out there now. And they're talking about another 12 million more coming on the market. So there's still lots of opportunities. And depending on the different markets, uh, some of the prices in, are coming up, because you know, most people are folks in there, but there's still lots of opportunities throughout both the states. Uh, new construction. Construction is on an all-time low, because they can't compete with the price of the foreclosures. And uh, so it just doesn't make sense for them to build. Price drops. Uh, if you've seen some of the slides earlier, I think on some of them we noticed that, noted that the prices, even in 2007, uh, you know, there's 50 percent off, if not more, on the price of the values in 2007. The demand is still going up. The U.S. population is still going through the roof. And there's another, you know, 100 million coming by 2025. So the demand is going to be there in the future. <coughs> and right now, like with everybody, that's a lot of people that are burnt by the housing crisis that took place, and people just don't want to buy. You know, turn to rental, so that, that's great for us to want to look at a long term hold. And then, as people turn around and start buying again, it's going to drive up the appreciation. So, there's a lot of factors that uh, come into play why you know, I think the U.S. Is a, is a great market. And it's not a lot. The Canadian dollar is, is great now, so there's uh, lots of uh, benefits from that. And the interest rates for people that want to either borrow here. Uh, on their home line of credits or whatever it may be and invest in the U.S., there's this great opportunity there also because even lending on a home line of credit, then you can turn around and still turn a good profit from, from their uh, investments in the U.S. also. So we mentioned a few markets that we were looking at earlier. Um, really in the U.S. it's broken down into some belt markets and emerging markets. So some belt markets are the U.S. Uh, sunny states. Uh, Nevada, California, Arizona, Florida, and as I mentioned, we're primarily, well, actually spread across it a, a lot because depending on different areas in Canada, I mean, we're all from the West Coast, we, you know, we think for it. You know, on the West Coast, people are thinking Nevada. So there's uh, different areas like that. In emerging markets, it's about false population and job growth. So people that, uh, basically, you're going into a city where it has the demand, and it's going to keep increasing. So that's where you, you do some research and you find those markets, and you focus on those. And then within in those markets to help select them, I mean, there's things like you mentioned earlier, the job growth and development, and then the inventory that's over there too. And what you're looking for, you're looking for single families or rentals. So depending on the type of property you're looking for, that will help you select the market. And then obviously uh, occupancy, vacation rates, uh, prices, and then more importantly, the type of neighborhood. So the type of neighborhood you want to invest in. You know, you can have really high-end neighborhoods or more zones down the, the D neighborhood. Uh, so there's lots of factors that come into play. You know, crime rates. Uh, school zones are huge in the states. Uh, people will move 
states for you know for good school zone. It's, it's a little different than here. You know, you're kind of there's some general areas where you want to be and have schools, but school zones drive a lot of people and, and where they live in the state. So those are a lot of important uh, factors to uh, take into play. So once we have in a market, so basically a city, then you drive down into that city and you pick your neighborhood where you want to go. So diving into that, so you do a complete neighborhood analysis again, further down into the prime rates, the populations, the type of people you, you want to either rent to, or if you're looking to flip, you want to have some single family homes. So you can pick based on you know, renters, homeowners, that type of thing. So a lot of, a lot of information and uh, statistical data that you can look at and do that research. Um, another big important thing is when you find a property, you want to make sure it's clear, clear title. Because there's so many things you can run into, uh, you know, tax liens on properties, previous owners, you know, construction liens, there's a lot of things just to make sure that it's clean title and then obviously have uh, title insurance also. So protect uh, you as the owner and an investor. Uh, condo corporations, homeowners associations in the States, um, it's a little different there, I guess, or, or I guess there's more of them, so you really need to be careful, and they've gone through a lot of hardship also, so if it's a high vacancy rate, uh, you will be careful of that. Uh, they may not have a reserve, so because you don't want to go in there and they get a low reserve, and then uh, they need to do some painting, like you mentioned earlier. They don't have money to do the painting, so that means that your HOA fees, your homeowner association condo fees, are going to go up. So there's, you know, things like that that you got to watch out for. Is there any... Um, uh, yeah, any other expenses that are coming in. So there's, a, there's a lot of things you just got to work through and make sure you do proper developments and work through it. Uh, we also uh, have on the ground property management there. We all basically have them going for it. So, understand your operations. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, they do it, you know, as, as, as Mo does, I think it does it for me here, so I think it's for you guys also. So that type of service, you know, good tenant screening uh, and, and property management, so we don't need to bring in any, anybody to maintain the properties, and, you know, it's there and it's taken care of. Um, and actually, as I actually see my places here almost as little as now. <laughs> 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 so they rely on all the yeah. good stuff. Um, U.S. tax compliance, being in the states, you know, IRS, so you got to be careful with some of that. So we uh, work with a lot of good accountants too that uh, can help through that, and uh, just being smart about you know, not messing around with the IRS and doing what's right, and how to, uh, to its full benefit, get your money back. So that's the key also. Um, and you know, the other things that, that we have and we, we offer up is, is full access to our power. And so realtors, I uh, mentioned um, accountants, uh, lawyers, uh, so all that uh, type of support is, uh, is important. And we rely, we have a big power team and you have to rely on some good people. Uh, in the various areas. So it takes a while to build up a power team. If you imagine doing it here, meeting people, it's it's uh, challenging, but it's a bunch of fun with people down there. You, you know, we're in the So same type of strategy, it just it takes a, a little while to, to pull together a power team. These are a few examples um, why we're, again, why we're thinking um, U.S. Uh, versus Canada. And again, it'll vary depending on, on some of the areas, but there's a couple samples. Um, here's a place in Moncton. Uh, we found this one on MLS, so I don't know if you guys can read that. I'll kind of go down. So three, two, three bedroom, two and a half bath uh, on Mill Road up there. These are the townhouses that are all together. Mm -hmm. um, asking price was $114.9. Uh, so depending on what you end up getting it for and renovations, so we just left it at that. So just as a value, um, rental income about nine fifty. We were thinking uh, property taxes about two hundred forty. Management nine fifty. Uh, condo fees and fine. Sorry, not <laughs> a lot of 
uh, condo fees, uh, 191, uh, maintenance and vacancy, and also, I'll come back to this here in the bottom part, but the reason why we're assuming a, a 78, uh, or sorry, with a 78,000 down payment on this, because we wanted to just show the difference, because in the U.S. we need to buy with cash, so we just wanted to show the difference of the expense of the mortgage, so. Here's a place in Kissimmee. Uh, again, it's a three, two and a half. Purchase price on that was 74,000. Uh, 1,700 square foot place. Uh, and $4,000 in renovations. So you can get a lot done for relatively cheap. And that I've seen from experience there that the costs are, are pretty reasonable to get things done. Property tax, uh, 129. Okay. In Simi, we notice the taxes are almost double here. Uh, management fees would be about the same. Uh, condo fees were less. Uh, maintenance fees. So those are some, some similarities between the two. And then, so that's why we took the seventy-four thousand down payment over here. Or sorry, seventy-eight, because you'd be buying with cash there. So just to see how much cash is working for you, we try to compare it. Uh, so basically, a month in here, the net cash flow would go to $117 a month. And on the same money working for you there, it was $617 a month in positive cash flow. Mm -hmm. So, a nine point, not based on nine and a half cap to a 3.45 cap. So, this one actually here is another example. This one actually is mine here. Uh, Mo takes care of it for me. Um, so I'll start on, on, on the other side. So it's a similar situation, just using the cash that we brought in for a down payment on the Orlando one. Uh, so it's a 3-2. It's purchased for 55 760 And all in cost, so full renovations, uh, 64000 so it's 1,140 square feet. It's getting 1,100 a month. And property taxes are 105. Management, so 110. Maintenance, 5%. Vacancy, 5%. And again, it's cash, so there's no mortgage. It's bringing in 775. Positive cash flow. 14.5% cap. It's pretty good. Uh, so I'm looking at the one that I have here, um, and it's a three, one and a half, it's 1,400 square feet, a little bit bigger. This is 156 purchase, uh, rental income, I'm always pushing for 1250. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, property taxes, 376, so property taxes are, are steep on it compared to down there. Uh, management fee and negotiating card at the moment, so maybe we can get us some savings. Uh, maintenance vacancy, and again, assume the 64000 down. And on a mortgage, so we just, so for some general numbers, we have 25 year, 5% on that percentage, or sorry, on that amount, and 535 mortgage, and it's $88 a month cash flow. And I find that actually to be one. I, I'm still happy with that here. Um, it's, you know, it's kind of recovering itself, and I'm hoping for appreciation in building teams, parking markets, properties. We look for we look for uh, flips and holds. Um, <coughs> you know, we were obviously. I mean, we would you know like to well, we do both, and depending on the situation of, of ourselves or our investors and the properties. And, the opportunities that are there, that's uh, the type of places that we, we focus on. Mm -hmm. Questions for any of that?